Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm your host and in today's news, Julia Gillard has some serious celebrity bona fides. Consider in 2017 she went to Malawi with her unlikely BFF Rihanna. Then last year on International Women's Day, which is March 8th, just in case it's not circled in your calendar, she spent it chatting to none other than Meghan, Duchess of Sussex. They, along with Annie Lennox and supermodel Edouard Boa, took to the stage in London for high-powered, wonderfully glamorous and headline-making panel discussion, where Meghan told the crowd that when it came to a little bump, she could feel the embryonic kick of feminism. Looking back on shots from the event, the then seven months pregnant royal glowed. Sure, it might be a cliche, but Meghan looked bloody good while she was expecting. More than that, she looked happy. And why shouldn't she be? She had a dishy husband, a baby on the way, and a sort of global platform that even Oprah must be jealous of. That, and she had acquired in-laws with the jewelry vault that would make Cinderella quiver with jealousy. The day after the IWD powwow, Meghan and husband Harry stepped out for the Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey. This is a red-letter day on Royal's calendar, given the Queen's long-held devotion to the far-flung nations that make up her dominion. Prince Charles and wife Camilla were there, along with William and Kate, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, and Harry and Meghan. This was royalty doing what it does best, turning up in four-figure ensembles and putting on a heartwarming display of family unity while they pretend not to be bored stiff by their lengthy service. That said, Harry and Meghan seem to know how to entertain themselves. During the 2018 service, they were caught on camera seemingly giggling during former One Direction singer-songwriter Liam Payne's rendition of Waiting on the World to Change. Only a year on and that inner glow is long gone. Early this morning, Australian East Coast time, Harry and Meghan will hit the red carpet for the Endeavour Awards, their first official and joint engagement since their bombshell resignation in January. Meghan has already been spotted in London, smiling as she left a hotel on Thursday afternoon. While we can expect more smiles from the couple, there can be no denying the privileges, priv prevailing sadness of the last few months. So much has changed in the last year's IWD outing. The Sussexes have filed a trio of lawsuits, faced a steady drumbeat of negative coverage over such things as their use of private jets, despite their stance on climate change, taken part a soul-bearing TV docker that seemingly confirmed that Harry and William are on, on the Otis, and been forced to contend with the controversy, controversy over little Archie's birth and his christening. That is all before we have gotten to the cankerous sore that is Thomas Markle's penchant for giving excoriating interviews about his daughter and son-in-law to anyone wielding a checkbook and a microphone. There is something painful about looking at images of Meghan with Julia on IWD or Meghan sharing a joke with Charles at Westminster Abbey. As in addition to the firm, the Sussexes' arrival was pregnant with possibility. Sorry, that was truly a terrible pun. Sure, Harry has been royal his entire life, but when he wed the former actress, the sum was greater than the parts. Together, they dramatically revived global interest in the royal family and were widely hailed as the millennial saviors to yank the monarchy into the 21st century, one hashtag and hug at a time. What is striking is back in 2019, when we were young and the world had yet to hoard toilet paper as a hobby, the Sussexes seemed to love what they did. They were two people who independently, before anyone had thought about setting them on a blind date, were both driven to improve the world. She was a global ambassador for World Vision Canada and a gender equality advocate at the UN. He had returned from Afghanistan after serving two terms on the front line with a sense of urgency to help re return servicemen and women. When they came together, not only in a personal sense, but that but as a philanthropic brand, they seemed not only unstoppable, but genuinely find real joy in the whole enterprise. That passion and delight to devote all their time in the world to do goodery as part of a millennium old institution has clearly long passed. I am sure their commitment to charity and making the world a better place has not dulled an iota. Rather, their willingness to cede so much of their autonomy and ability to truly use their voices however they see fit has diminished dramatically. Essentially, being royal required agreeing to a bargain they were no longer willing to make, and that is a heartbreaking point to reach for anyone involved. 
While William and far more so Kate are beloved in the UK, they are mostly a benign plotting presence presenting a stability, continuity and a sombre devotion to Marx and Spencer separates. They might be photogenic and have an impressive pro propensity to produce photogenic children who seem strangely obedient when it comes to posing for stage family photos, but the Cambridges represent a certain stodgy mon monotony. Which is why the loss of the Sussexes will be felt so keenly. Poll after poll in the UK has found that Harry is the most popular royal with millennials and that more liberal Brits are unequivocally in favour of him. No matter how many vintage frocks or outfits from such hipster labels such as Vampire's Wife that Kate wheels out, they will never be able to compete with the wholesale resuscitation of the royal brand that Harry and Meghan represented to the royal family. With a dramatic changing of the guard coming in the next decade, despite appearances the Queen is not a mortal as far as I know, generation proofing the monarchy must surely be pretty much near the top of every Buckingham Palace courtier's to-do list. How they achieve that now I have no idea. With this year's IWD celebrations only days away, the questions that will not go away is, how did it come to this? How in only a year did all that promise and hope be replaced by so much anguish and hurt? No matter what you think of the events of last year, we must all surely hope that Meghan and Harry both find that inner glow again. Thank you very much for listening. That's all for today's news. I'll see you next video.